This week, Canada's former ambassador to the U.S., Derek Burney, wrote an opinion piece entitled Enough is Enough, Clear the Blockades and Restore the Rule of Law. Burney's long career in government included serving as Brian Mulroney's chief of staff, and he also spent time as an executive at companies such as CE and Bell, along with serving on numerous boards, including that of the former Trans Canada. He joins us this morning via Skype from Golden, Colorado. Derek, thanks as always for being with us. What prompted you to share your views on this developing story this week? Well, I became increasingly disillusioned at what was going on. And by reading a few uh, columns by other people, I just decided that, you know, I had to say something that I could never say as a diplomat, obviously. But I feel very strongly about the issue. I mean, if the government is not going to uphold the rule of law in the country, who is? And if the government is not going to assert the national interest on major projects for the country, who is? And I, I, I just am exasperated by the inaction and the indolence of government. And I'm talking about not just the political level, but the bureaucratic level as well, in dealing with what has become a paralysis that's leading to a national crisis. And we're still seeing no evidence of real action. We hear talk about dialogue. Well, there's been dialogue for five years, if not longer, on these issues. And dialogue without delivery is why we're in the problem right now. And you cannot have a dialogue, in my opinion, as I said in the piece, with people who won't listen or who believe that theirs, they are the custodians of the only truth. I mean, you, you, you've heard on your recent uh, telecast that the, the, native, uh, the nation involved is divided among itself on this. Many of them are working in industry and they want to continue to work in industry. It seems to me, John, that many people in Canada, including many in government, are beginning to realize now how this country operates, when, or perhaps I should say how it doesn't operate when you, when you don't have a rail service. So, I, you know, I, I guess I'm frustrated and I'm exasperated because I really believe that the government has a responsibility to act on this, not, not to talk, not for symbols, but to get involved directly and break, get rid of the blockades. You, you can deal with all these issues. These issues have been dealt with in the courts, through the regulatory agencies, but there's never enough for a tiny minority in the community who want to block all progress on coastal gas link and on other energy products projects. So I just, I really think that we've got to get our act together. The government's got to act because this is not going to go away peacefully or patiently or through extensive dialogue. It takes concrete action. The government has a responsibility to act, and it should. And yet we, we heard the prime I minister... We heard the Prime Minister repeatedly say, and we had that in that, in that report we ran before we uh, introduced you, that uh, his plan is to do everything uh, in his power to resolve this peacefully. What is your assessment of how the Prime Minister has handled this situation? Well, <laughs> there's nothing to assess, Joe. There is nothing to assess because nothing has been done. I mean, that's why I say enough is enough. I mean, the government has a responsibility to uphold the rule of law in the very first instance. So, in, in my opinion, the law enforcement agencies should be authorized by both the federal and the provincial governments where relevant to act on the court injunctions that are in place to get rid of this blockade, a blockade that is paralyzing the country's economy and the supply chains across the country that need attention now. This is not gonna come around through another meeting, through another symbolic meeting. It's gonna come from action. And, and for those who are, are concerned about violence, I mean, listen, the RCMP and even the military, if necessary, are well-schooled on how to react to this kind of situation without creating or initiating violence. If they are attacked in any way, then they have the right to defend themselves, but they're not going to initiate any kind of violence. They, they have excellent training in managing episodes like this in a peaceful manner. Do you think 
the situation, and, and just to tie it back to the Prime Minister, do you think we'd be talking about a different situation if we weren't uh, seeing a minority government in Ottawa, Derek? Well, as, as I said in my column, John, having a minority government doesn't mean that you have no government. You know, I think a minority government has to assume the responsibility of a full government and act accordingly. And if it's defeated, so be it. But I think you, you have to take some risks as a government, particularly a minority government. When, but, but, you know, just talking about it and saying you're doing everything possible to resolve the issue peacefully, well, where's the evidence of that? And what does it say to the people who are being laid off by CN and by Via Rail? What's, what's the compensation for them, for them? I mean, is the government going to come in with a compensation package, uh, you know, in order to alleviate the difficulty for those who are being unemployed? I mean, I think the Prime Minister has to take direct action personally on this issue, issue uh, the kind of uh, ordinances that I've mentioned, and make sure that people understand that this is not a behavior in the country that, the, that we are going to tolerate. I mean, we are a nation of laws, and if people break the laws, there has to be some consequence. The problem is that these people, people believe that there are no consequences for illegal blockades in any part of the country because nobody is doing anything to prevent it. That's just not right. That's not the kind of Canada we should want for anybody. Well, certainly lots to continue to track. Derek, good to get your perspective as always. Derek Bernie, partner at Bernie Investment Group and Canada's former ambassador to the U.S., weighing in on the blockade story, joining us this morning from Golden, Colorado via Skype. Now,